here we are at the fabled Moroni Glyphs. There's Gus. Hey, Bubba. And here are the glyphs. Oh, my. They're made of Moroni. Moroni's own hand did carve the... As you can see, there's some contemporary markings there. I don't think there's a yin-yang like the ones that are in uh, Fillmore. There's a horse head. Horse head, guys. No horses when Moroni was here. Sorry. Uh, let's see. I mean, who knows? Pretty crazy. Here's the cool cave that goes down through. Gus is tired. Couldn't find this freaking place forever. It's like buried. Hum, Bubba. Gus is four leaf chover, four leaf clover. <sighs> Was our good luck charm. See, and we found it this time. Last time, my girlfriend sprained her ankle. She's not here, but she's gonna come back. I'm trying to find this dumb place. When I was, I was here when I was eight years old with the scout group and the lady told me that this was written by Moroni and then it showed where the brass plates of Laban, for those of you who know what Mormon doctrine, this cave here and these writings were supposed to point to a place up on this mountain where supposedly BYU came and did an expedition one time and made a road up there. Listen, I'm from here, there's never been anybody who made a road on that freaking thing. It's the rockiest cut on earth, but anyway. And when they got up there and they made the road and they started digging in where they thought that they would find the plates, a great light was supposed to have shown out from the tunnel and then they just abandoned it and never spoke of it again. Somehow she knew the story, but, and somehow no one else in the world knew the story, but apparently BYU. They found the brass plates of Laban and then they're just keeping mom on the word. Anyway, this little cave tomb looking thing. Those writings right there, baby. Moroni's own hand. Brass plates of Laban somewhere up there. Peace.